The following is an Ice on Mars presentation. Don't be sad, don't be blue. Now it's time for Leprechaun 2. What the fuck? Um. Hey everyone, this is Michael T. Bradley. And Audrey Ironsy. And we are back for another round of Leprechaun. And this I, I I'll be honest, I think this is probably the last Leprechaun we'll look at, and we'll we'll get to that in a moment, uh, as to why. But uh, first let's do a basic plot synopsis. Okay, so we're going to talk more about this later, but the Leprechaun, in a completely, uh, possibly a completely different continuity, is now looking for a bride. It's his 1,000th birthday at the beginning. It, in the past, I, I assume it would be, what, year 994. <laughs> and he just misses getting a bride, and so he's like, I'm going to be back in a thousand years goes after his bride then, and and, and um, uh, this is the story of him trying to get that bride. And get his gold back. Right, and get his gold back, because of course... What's a leprechaun without any gold? <laughs> right, what's a, and what's a leprechaun movie without... When me gold! Yes. There, that's the plot of the movie, right? So let's let's talk about what the fuck moments. Audrey, if you want to lead, sure. lead those off here. Um, rot iron now is the only way to kill a leprechaun. I know this is common, but for me it was really weird watching it now, and, and it's popping out even more. Body double tits. Pregnant with a pot of gold. The leprechaun in the flashback has a shark tooth necklace. Apparently if you catch a leprechaun, you get three wishes. Motorboating a lawnmower. <laughs> I think it's lawnmower. We, should, we, should, we, we, we might at one point talk about the deaths here, but let's, let's first talk about so you brought it up in your what the fuck moments, and, and it kind of came up in the plot synopsis. We're trying to figure out what the hell continuity is this leprechaun, what rules does it follow? And the first one, the rules were very uh, confused and well, I mean, all over the place. As far as his abilities, yes. Yeah. But we knew that if you needed to trap him or kill him, you would have to use a four-leaf clover. Right. That was, that was the way to kill a leprechaun. Didn't even come up once. In right. this film. Well, except in a very minor way. When, How? when he built his car in this one, because of course he built another killer soap, soapbox derby car, there is a little um, four-leaf clover with a, uh, you know, like a no sign through it, like the <laughs> Ghostbuster sign, except instead of a ghost, it's four-leaf clover. That's the only... There were a couple of cute little nods to the first one, but for the most part, this just ignores the first one. Which and is, it wasn't used to, to destroy him in any means. I mean, this one, this leprechaun didn't like them, obviously, but it didn't really pose a threat. The other big thing is that in Leprechaun 1, he mentions being 600 years old, right? That's correct, yes. And in this one, he is at least 2,000 years old, about four years, two years, whatever, after the first movie came yeah. out. Yeah, so we, we don't know if this is the same Leprechaun. I think it is, because yeah, it's you, the same, but played by the same actor. You, you think it is, but I think it's definitely not. I think that these movies are just assume that all little people are basically interchangeable. Yeah, they, they look exactly the same. And right. have the same voice. Though and to, wear similar clothes. To be fair... And War call themselves a leprechaun. <laughs> to be fair, A, Warwick Davis, his, his makeup does look pretty different in this one. So He looks more like a leprechaun. Right. He looks less like... Like this is not the first movie, that this is a second in a series. Right. He looks more like we had more than 50 bucks and some putty, some like uh, actor's putty. Or maybe he had gotten a little older. <laughs> right. <laughs> or else, unbeknownst to us, this movie is actually set, you know, what, 400 years, or no, uh, 1400 years after the second movie, and it's positing that society just does not change at all in that time looks exactly like... It will always be the 80s. Yeah, it will, it will always be the mid-90s by now. This was 94, it still I believe like that. The 80s. It really does still look like the 80s. <sighs> one, of the, one of those two theories. You, you take your pick. Yeah. Another thing about this movie is that we kind of talked about with the first one, are they trying to be funny? Are they trying to be tongue-in-cheek? With this one, they definitely plant their flag firmly in the ground of, yes, this is tongue-in-cheek. That and, and so the things that come later, like Leprechaun in Space, Leprechaun in the Hood, seem far less surprising now that I've seen the first two movies because it's like, oh, well, this this series was always meant to be ridiculous. I mean, how many, can, how many things can you do with a Leprechaun is basically what it became. Well, I... I mean, you, you know... You can't have him go and, like, get his gold back from just any old person every single time. <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta mix it up a little bit. Right, but you could mix it up in all sorts of different ways. I mean, look at the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. You know, it was always, I mean, it was always about, it's, it's gonna be about between three and seven kids, and they all have something unique, and then you make a twist on that unique thing that ties into their death, right? Like the kid who liked puppets, and then his uses his veins to puppet him, and uh, the kid who liked comics, and he's killed inside a comic, and you know, blah, 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 blah. In the same way, I mean, you could just watch, rinse, repeat with a leprechaun and make it all about Warwick Davis having funny quips. Yes. To be fair, you know, one, one, of, my, uh, one of my big... Uh, my thing that I said that I would change about Leprechaun 1 is, is let Warwick Davis act more, uh, allow him to move around and be in the light, and they definitely do that in this one. So, to be fair, th this one did uh, in improve in a lot of ways, and I, I, I feel like, you know, maybe the sequels might not be as good, but they at least have kind of figured out what they want to do with this series, and so mm -hmm. it, it feels pretty firm to me, and so I feel a little bad <laughs> picking on it, but we can definitely still have some fun with it. Well, it seemed that, like they had made a lot of corrections from the first, from the first movie. They had... There's a book now that they're reading from to, to find out information about how to kill a leprechaun, right. what kind of skills they have, they're known for their trickery, and, you know, they which, try to spell it all out where it was pretty confusing. Before. Yeah, which our protagonists just have, you know, because that's how people in this movie roll. That's how, like, con artists roll, is that they just have books about leprechauns yeah, they lying have a around. library with everything that they happen to need. You know, I remember when I was younger and I watched a lot more horror movies, I thought maybe it would be really helpful to have like a um, like a demonic sort of library, just in case you were ever haunted by anything, and you could be like, oh shit, thump, open this to page 332 and you will see the blah 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 blah, you know, like they did all the time on Buffy, right? But mm -hmm. now, of course, we've just got Google, so we're all good. And Neighborhood Watch. Yeah, <laughs> yes. That was, oh my god, so stupid in Twilight that they had to do, like, a 45-second montage of her doing Google searches and reading books, and it's like, he's a goddamn vampire. This is not obscure Gaelic deity in a river or some shit. It's a fucking vampire. Come on. Snap to it here. I wanted to point out that in this movie, we have, again, interesting, suave techniques. In the first one, we had the feeling up the ankles underneath a pickup truck. So, I wanted to ask Audrey, Yeah. would this line work on you? I saved a special crash helmet just for you. <laughs> At the go-kart lanes. Oh, um, it probably would. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're learning more about you than that. I'm, I'm trying to, so, alright, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start looking up crash helmets, I guess, here. <laughs> Let's talk about the deaths in this movie. Okay, yeah. And, and it, it, you can kind of cover, we're, we're, we're going to do like 360 degree reporting mm -hmm. here. You can kind of cover the method aspect, and I'm going to cover the victim aspect. Because something, you, you know, in, in a lot of these style movies where you've got the, the supernatural villain and they're done kind of with a, with a spirit of fun, you know, like, I, I mean, like... You know, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies and stuff like that, and, and the uh, Chucky movies are, are definitely horror movies, but they've all got the spirit of fun, and you're almost supposed to somewhat root for the bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. But I couldn't help noticing this, especially in this movie, that the Leprechaun's victims, he's, he's just a dick yeah. overall. Uh, because we have, so the first one is the homeless man who... Well, actually, that's not true, because... Oh, well, the first one is the slave guy, right? The slave right? guy, yeah. he's enslaved this, this guy who's of this lineage that he's supposed to be plucking a wife from, potentially. Yeah. And, yeah. um, he's able to basically capture this person and is revealing to him, as if he's his friend, that his job is his birthday and he's gonna pick out his wife. And it's about her sneezing three times and then she'll be his wife. It right. says, yeah, sneeze once, sneeze twice, she sneezed thrice, she be my wife. Right. And then he, as she sneezes for the third time, the father, who happens to be his slave, says, God bless you, my, my child. And he's murdered. Yeah, he tries to run away and he's murdered. Which, okay, so before that, the leprechaun, like, grabs him with chains and shit. This, this is really, this belongs somewhere later where okay. we get to, but... Let's go ahead and bring it up now, because we can we can come back to the methods of death here in a bit. But he he's like wrapping chains around him at first, because at first, before we get all that plot twistiness, all we know is that he's stolen his gold, right? 
Yeah. And the leprechaun's like, give me me gold back. And then he's like, oh, by the way, it happens to be my thousandth birthday. And let me tell you all this backstory about how I get a wife. Yeah. He hurts him with chains or whatever the hell he's messing with him with at that point. Yet we find out later in the movie that if you have the leprechaun's gold, you can't be harmed by him. Uh, he, that's what they say. <laughs> So I have this gigantic problem with that point that's brought up because there's this one point in the movie where essentially our main character, who's kind of a cheap Brad Renfro slash Will Friedel, is just about to be mowed down by the leprechaun in his uh, race car derby car with little spikes on the front. And it just zooms right through him. And you find out it's because he has the leprechaun's gold. So with the gold, he's safe from the leprechaun. But if anybody who steals gold from the leprechaun is safe from him, that means the leprechaun can never harm the person who's stolen from him. Yeah, so then he just has to resort to taking more gold from whoever he can find or killing whoever crosses his path. Right, exactly. Which seems useless, and I mean, it just makes him a dick. So, okay, so he kills that guy by snapping his neck, mm -hmm. cause he, and, and he curses his, his line before he snaps his neck. Next person is the homeless guy. Yeah, so there's this guy, he's um, over by Houdini's house. I guess they he have the he, tour. He actually didn't kill him, did he? He, he ripped out his tooth. Right, yeah, he, but he was, he was, he violated him. So oh, let's, so let's, death or violation. Okay, fair enough. So yeah, um, homeless man comes with his Canadian dry whiskey up to <laughs> Houdini's last known residence. And we know this because the, the characters, the Cody, who is the one you were just talking right. about. And his comrade, which is Morty, who's a cross between George Carlin and Stanley Kubrick yeah. kind of uh, character. They're doing like a dark side horror, but like a limousine tour for tourists. And yeah. um, they come by the house. And apparently where the homeless man has decided to bedroll um, and drink his whiskey, inside of the tree right behind him is where the entrance to the leprechaun's lair is. And we know this because his bottle of Canadian dry whiskey is suddenly moving away from him and being drank by the uh, leprechaun. And he comes out, sees that he has gold, and rips it from his mouth. Yeah, he sees he has a gold tooth and just uh, immediately begin uh, rips it from him uh, which again kind of problematic because if he's ripping it out of him it technically becomes his gold and he's just hurt someone to get it so i but that could be we could we could kind of look past that i guess next person very similarly it's, it's gold that he's getting is is kind of this rich dick who flips the leprechaun a quarter and then is like, oh, I'm from this talent company. Come see me if you're interested. And? And the leprechaun happens to see has this big, chunky gold ring on his finger. And so he decides to pluck it with the finger right from his hand. Yeah. Um, and very, the pinky finger, which seems excessive. Um, yeah, very much like <laughs> the movie The Warlock. Um, I think at the same time, he's like, finger looking good. Yeah. yeah. So you just can't resist. Yeah. So, uh, after that, it's it's the kind of sort of rapist, the Kirk Cameron one. Oh, yeah, I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Audrey has a soft spot for all the wannabe rapists, who he's, I mean, like, as far as, like, date rapists go, he's, like, really low on the totem pole because he's like, I bought your chili dogs, you yeah. owe me. Yeah. Then, she, and she wasn't having it. Yeah, then he gives up really easily. So it's like, not only is he a cheap-ass wannabe date rapist, but he's also got no follow-through. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who dies by. Um, yeah, so there's these twin blades that look like they're the bottom of a lawnmower that are impersonating this. I think it's over. I did that totally backwards. Hold on. So can no, you they, they are impersonating. Yeah, no, you're right. So he sees this beautiful woman, which is the one he had just left, and she's in the garage calling him to her. And she's unbuttoning her dress very slowly. I mean, her, excuse me, her top, her white top. And underneath is a white bra. And she's signaling him to come over. And he's just, you know, loving this. Because she wants to apologize and make it up to him. Right. Brazzers presents. Yeah. And he says, you can start. This is just right after you called her a fucking bitch. And, <laughs> and, and walked away. And so as she also she had walked away into the house. Into and now, the house. now she's in the garage. Now she's in the garage. And so yeah, as she's undressing, he's getting closer and closer. And then we see the big fake tits. 
Yeah. And as he's getting closer and closer to touch From and probably put his, yes, his face in, in her chest. We discover that it's actually the leprechaun making two blades from a lawnmower resemble this woman. Right. His breasts. And um, he gets his face, you know, bladed mm -hmm. up, and we don't get to see it, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. They were, they were all about showing us the fake tits, but when it came to the violence, they no. skimped. Yeah. And the uh, last really big... Well, okay, I guess two more. Uh, the last kind of unrelated to the plot victim that we had was the very effeminate guy. The waiter at that one place. Oh, who, I love that guy. Yeah, who was like by far the best actor in yes. the movie. I don't know why he didn't have... The bartender at the, yeah, the place. He's the last one. The leprechaun was the last one there. He thought he was a method actor because he was dressed like a leprechaun, but he was calling him like a dwarf or something like that. In different I, think, well, I, think it, I think he thought he was a method actor because he talked in rhyme. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, so... And his method? His method was... I only know... <laughs> so, yeah, two Steve, pins. Yeah. Two pins impaled him to the bar. Now, we don't really know where they came from or what they were, but... Well, I think they were, like, coffee drink mixer things or something. Well, the, then the or other knives. piece... Or knives, yeah. But they were olive, olive uh, toothpicks. Pick, yeah. 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 Um, and then his face is steamed to boil uh, by coffee makers, those little tubey things that yes. steam the milk. Yes. Yeah, those turn on the side and then get his face really big. I was skeptical of that scene, I'll admit. I don't, I don't care how much it would hurt to be, to Solid. have your, yeah, to have your hand stabbed into the 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 counter i think once that steam starts coming on your face you would rip one of those yeah, hands through absolutely. but whatever yeah so uh then he also kills uh the george carlin knockoff guy through the pot of gold in the stomach and then he tears mm -hmm. it out and his insides fall out but it's but that one's more related to the plot so i don't think it's well, that was of the three wishes that actually yeah. came out of nowhere. That whole... Okay, so give me just a second Thanks. and we'll get back to that. But the, but the thing that I'm leading up to with, with all of these is the rich guy and the wannabe rapist. You kind of feel like, oh, okay, this is... We're having that sort of fantasy fulfillment in a horror movie where you see the bad people get something terrible happen to them. Mm -hmm. And because horror movies, you know, always kind of appeal to that... So you're saying younger. because he was rich, he was bad. Yes, oh. and and he was he was he was <laughs> condescending to the little person, and 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 so you know the rich is always kind of made or the, the the horror movies are always kind of made for a younger anarchic crowd. But you know what was the what was the leprechaun doing on the ground? I I think he was performing a spell on the sidewalk there. In the public area. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It's <laughs> where else is he gonna do? <laughs> I think he was performing the spell to find the chick. Okay. Which he waits right to the last minute. But anyway. the So the thing is, is that when those two people are punished, it seems like there's, like there's, it's kind of a fantasy fulfillment thing. But him torturing the homeless guy. And I forgot that the branches come up from the ground to pull the homeless man so he can kind of control him. Very like the evil dead thing we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. So he, so he tortures that homeless guy. And he he murders the like pretty funny charming uh, Barky, uh, who I thought was portrayed in a very effeminate sort of gay way. So it seemed to me like again we are continuing the thread of the fact that the leprechaun is just a dick. I mean, there's just no way around it. He's just a dick. Like he he just keeps taking out his frustrations in the most ridiculous of ways. Yeah, he's like a big fucker. He likes to fuck. <laughs> He's like Lexington he Steel. He's a big fucker. <laughs> the <laughs> and he wants to fuck a bride. That's right. <laughs> there really could have been more, more with that. Uh, uh, this this creepy twisted sexuality of the the leprechaun. I thought it was pretty great actually when he finally captured her and put her in a burlap sack. Put right. the neck neck brace on, right? Mm, yeah, and uh, and kept her as his captive, and then offered her clothing. Right. Yes. And 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 you love the weird bukkake shot when he licks her. Yes. All with, that. All that slime dripping right. from her face that resembles exactly what you just said. <laughs> the thing that I thought was a little weird about that is that because it didn't go 
very far. I mean, that slime dripping, and then the fact that it looks like he pulls that dress out of her vagina. Yeah, I thought that was amazing. <laughs> but because they don't push it any farther than that, it really just seems to imply that the kind of horror of her sleeping with a lepre or, or of her becoming a leprechaun's bride is supposed to be the horror of a little person. Like, well, but what they, he was saying is that she was going to have to have a litter of his kids. They were going to have to alter her stomach and change her face so that the, the children in the litter would feed off of her, accept her, them as, ugh, accept her as their mother by recognizing how disfigured she is. That's true. I'd, I'd forgotten about that. I, 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 I still felt it, it veered a little too far into the realm of... Like, ooh, little people are the other. If they wanted to have sex with you, that'd be creepy. And I was like, that's a little... I thought it was kind of like... I thought I, I could kind of get into it up until he wanted to mutilate her. Right. And have, make her have a whole bunch of babies. Yeah, the, the, yeah. I, was, as I say, I had I had forgotten about that. Yeah, and that, that, was, that does kind of push insane. it over there. And then he... And obviously, it's it's rape. So, I mean, if uh, rape doesn't actually happen in the movie. But if it had, it would have been rape. So And then she starts pretending that she was actually into him. And yeah. feathers her hair, yeah. which I think is great. That is... It, women, if you ever want to trick me into thinking that you want to have sex with me in order to shove an awl into my neck, the way to do it is to feather your hair. Bigger. Bigger and better. Right. If, if it looks like a cow catcher on the front of a train... I'm, I'm putty. Yeah, and, and you don't want to take your hand and pull back your hair off of your face without letting it go and coming back. <laughs> <laughs> now that'll drive me insane. I'll... You wanted to talk about the three wishes. Oh, I did, yeah. So um, I thought it was very strange now that leprechauns grant three wishes if you catch them. This was new information to me. I thought this is something like you'd see in the movie Aladdin. With With, with, with little blue people. Right. With a, with <laughs> with a, a lamp. Gym. Yeah, a a right. gym that comes out of a lamp. With, uh, which, this... And, and I, I still contend that that scene is just the leprechaun fucking with George Carlin. Uh, and I think so, too, because it's like Cody screaming in the locked room because Morty, who really likes gold and money and every opportunity he has, he's trying to stick it in his pocket. He catches the leprechaun. Well, they both catch the leprechaun. He, he's locked Cody away, and Cody is begging to be let out because Morty is just getting obsessed with trying to get the pot of gold from the leprechaun. He knows he has it. He knows he gets, gets three wishes, and one of them is for the gold. They've trapped the leprechaun in an iron safe yes. because wrought iron, because the leprechaun is now part of the fey sort of mythology, and wrought iron rather than a four-leaf clover is going to hurt him, which is amusing considering the leprechaun in the first movie hides in a wrought iron safe at one point, and is totally fine. But here, when he's in a wrought iron safe, he's trapped there, and it's, oh god, no, it's a, so much pain. So he w Morty wishes for a pot of gold, and the leprechaun says that he'll give him the pot of gold if he lets him out of the safe. And he's like, no, no, I want my gold first. So what happens is he becomes pregnant with this gold, and it's busting out of his... It's starting to, to fill his belly up really big, and he's in a lot of pain, and it's actually in the form of the pot. And then his... Uh, what was his second wish? Well, that's the thing. Second wish is... The leprechaun says, you're going to have to use your, you know, he, he, he says, get it out, get it out, get yeah. it out. And he says, you'll have to use a wish to get me yes. out. So he, his second wish is for the leprechaun to get out of the safe. And then the leprechaun says, okay, now unlock the safe. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> which which is, is totally like, I get that at that point, George Carlin is in so much pain that he's not <laughs> thinking straight. But you obviously should know, okay, this is a total trick. Yeah. Because. Leprechauns are tricky. Right, because if the second wish was to get him out of the safe, then he should be out of the safe. Yeah, and so then finally he's out of the safe, and then he takes his claw, and then he puts it into his stomach and rips it over. Right, because he, he, first he makes him use his third wish to get it out of me, and, and then of course he rips it out. And then he takes his gold back. Right, and it's suddenly extremely clean. And he makes it disappear. Again, yeah, there's no blood. Right. No blood. Because, and, and the thing is, he, he makes it disappear, and he... And he seems to have been able to, I, I mean, if the second wish to wish him out of the safe didn't actually do anything, that's why I think he was fucking with him. Mm -hmm. Because there was no point in making him unlock the safe yeah. then. I think he was just fucking with him that whole time. So I, I don't think leprechauns actually make wishes. I think if they did, they would have put in, because they did put in the scene with them talking about with the book and being like, oh, look, here on this page it says leprechauns. And, and like, this book even had the bit about the bride. 
It's like on his thousand oh, birthday. I like that. Yeah, I like he that. He can he can have a, a bride. Uh, but uh, only of this O'Day. No, 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 no. That's 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 not how it works, isn't that's it? Like, no, because the leprechaun cursed his family so that he would take a bride from the family. It's like you got your daughter safe, but in a thousand years, somewhere down your line, I'm gonna be. I didn't Stuck know that. In that. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, gonna, I'm gonna be balls deep in one of your an or, uh, descendants. Some of the weirdest moments in this movie, just a couple of little moments that stand out. In return, I'll, I'll mention some of the clever moments. I'll mention a clever moment first before I forget about it. They, they do a little nod to uh, Todd Brown's Freaks with a One of Us moment, which I thought was pretty clever. I thought that worked really well. But another, <laughs> but one of the odder moments is so our, our hero Cody gets very upset because he's been kind of spurned by his girl. And, and so what does he do when he gets upset? He hides in his room, listens to The Cure, like a Muzak version of The Cure, and watches old black and white romances. This seemed, I don't know, it's not something that I've ever done when I've been heart sick. I have. Okay. Yeah. Though you're... I'm a girl. Right. You're not as Cody-esque. I have so. a library card. So do I. What's, what's girlish about having a little... What uh, that means I can watch whatever movie I want to watch. <laughs> they don't... There's some movies they don't have. I thought it was odd this movie started with Once Upon a Time. I thought that was very strange. In Ireland. That, that to me, it just seems like, oh, by the way, none of this matters. Another moment is when the chick who's, uh, I guess her actual name is Siobhan, and in the movie her name is Bridget... Uh, so she, but she talks as if she's kind of Swede Czechoslovakian or something. She is trapped in the leprechaun's lair, and she comes across a toadstool room with a Zen garden in it. <laughs> so the leprechaun's interior design sense all over the place. And suddenly he has a lair, like a place that he lives. Yeah, that's not in Ireland. I wasn't sure if if it was a portal that was right. a tree. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we ever found out. I, I I think maybe there might have been like another portal that led out to Ireland. That 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 could be. There, there's also a clever moment I thought was they keep doing that gag where oh we just wound up in the same place by doing clever editing and then at one point they're like let's try this way and they just literally run behind the set piece and back out again and they're like damn we wound up here again. I that got that got an actual uh, real laugh for me. I, th I thought that the home in which you live looked a lot like the Ninja Turtles sewer. Sure. Lots of different rooms, real kind of blando in there. I can see that. I, I, I really, at times, felt like they were going for that, the ending of Nightmare on Elm Street, sort of, everywhere is a different nightmare, but instead it was just, here's a Zen garden. <laughs> not not quite as nightmarish, mm -hmm. but still, you know, and then, and then the, like, bad George Lucas animation effects at times for, I, those just don't blend well with horror movies, I don't <laughs> think, but it, it happened here. Let's talk about lineage a little bit. I thought it would be fun because, you know, we had Schwann in here and mm -hmm. the O'Day family. And mm -hmm. so I was just curious, what the hell sort of name is Ivan C? What? Uh, um, <laughs> well, it's a, it's a family name. Right. Yeah. Where, so where is that from? <laughs> so I guess the Ivan usually means son of. It's Ivan C, but it's um, Slovenian. Mm. Okay. So it's probably actually derived from Ivanovich. And then it's kind of influenced, I guess, by an American. I, well, I was actually just going to say, isn't a bitch, doesn't that mean son of? So, um, so are you son of son of? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so it's like Rus Russo-Slovenian then? Son of Ivan, probably. I have no idea. Well, well so, but but the uh, you said it probably originally was uh, Ivan a bitch? Ivan a bitch? That's what I've heard. Okay, and so so we, either way, that would imply Russo-Slovenian, then? Um, yeah, well, yeah, so it's, it's yeah, a Yugoslavian, a Lithuanian. I'm a mix of a couple different things from that Got area. It. I don't, and now that it's changed so much in America, I, I yeah. can't tell you where all the roots of it come from. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand what the hell is happening over there. <laughs> I've heard that it's fascinating to tour, but... What about Bradley? It is, well, so that's why I brought it up, because okay. I have a funny, uh, <laughs> cute little story here. So I once asked my mom, because, I mean, Bradley, very, very generic name, right? And so I asked my mom, where are we from? And she said, I think Maryland. <laughs> so I am apparently Native American, Bradley. That's nice. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm assuming I'm just some sort of Northern European Caucasian mongrel uh, of some sort, uh... but... 
But that's but <laughs> from <laughs> the stories that I've heard, I'm apparently from Maryland. Oh, that's cool. That was an awesome scene. Oh, with where, the bone. Yeah, oh, yeah. So good. Because the because the leprechaun makes uh, <laughs> Siobhan slash Bridget whatever sneeze thrice, and the third time Cody Cody immediately says starts to say God bless you, and the leprechaun's like, no, not a fucking again. Yes. <laughs> and so he causes a cord a, a cor corded corded phone to start choking very Cody. Pol a very poltergeist with the braces. You know, when you get start getting the wire wraps around the face, you get kind of like the... I don't remember that at all, but oh, I'll trust so you. Anyways, um, yeah. And, and and Cody just immediately is like, where's a fucking knife? I, I really like that about Cody in this movie, the fact that uh, a, a magic slash leprechauns attack at any moment, even before he knows that it's a leprechaun attacking, and he's just like... Fuck it, let's just deal with it. I thought that was a refreshing change of pace. Yeah, I was like, stand back, my fair maiden. He grabs, <laughs> like, a, a dull knife from the kitchen and is barely holding it. Right. Like, he's afraid of something. Well, it seemed to me like he was trying to be threatening with it, but the problem is that... He wasn't even holding it tight. Also, he was kind of threatening towards someone who would be about six foot tall. Yes. That... Uh, that isn't standing two and a half feet. And he could see the leprechaun at that point, who was obviously not not that tall, and could disappear at any moment had the leprechaun wanted to. <laughs> exactly. So some minor problems yeah. abound, but overall, I th I decently enjoyed this yeah. movie. Yeah, I thought it was yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I Let's, liked the dress. Yes, crushed velvet, red, red crushed Beautiful velvet dress, dress that was just gorgeous. I was not really a fan of the actor it was on, but. I, uh, but gorgeous dress. Yeah. Definitely. So, Audrey, one thing that you could change about this film that would make it even better, what what would that be? Mm, I would say the consistency of the four-leaf clover from the first movie. You just can't let that go. I, it's, I just, it just make any sense from It's a different leprechaun. Totally different leprechaun. So, totally. different, different, they have different powers, leprechaun to leprechaun, they're still going to be played by the same dude. Yeah, apparently. Doesn't follow. This doesn't follow. It it does not. It does and not. I'd like to bring Jennifer Aniston back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Why not? I I'm not sure what I would change about this movie. I think for the most part they accomplished what they wanted. I guess I would just say in general a, a bigger budget and definitely a better main actress. I just I just thought she did not bring any sort of charm or character. Yeah, she wasn't to... strong. Yeah. She didn't have any, anything going for her. It, it, it's, it's Except like... for those fake tits that didn't belong to her. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cast the body double as her, for God's sake. And then just have her be nude for half the film. You know, that, yeah, that body double had more charm and character in those tits than <laughs> than, than poor Schwann did through uh, the whole thing. But I'm thinking now, now that you mentioned it earlier, was uh, how much you liked the bar, the barkeep. Yeah. I think if we could have kept him around or seen him in anything else. Right. I liked him a lot. He was just, he had the whole, he had the whole scene. The leprechaun should have enslaved him and, and he should have just kept being in the background, being kind of the harlequin to yes. the leprechaun. Yes. Making fun of him at every turn and the leprechaun keeps torturing him, but he just keeps happen. coming back with another zinger for, you know, I, it's, it's, I mean, it would be horrible to see him keep getting tortured, but it'd be great to see But him. it is a horror movie. Title. Right, exactly. There you go. There you go. Also, Wendy Roberson from Twin Peaks is in this, so more of her. I would have liked more of her. But I think we've covered about enough for now. Yeah. So, this is Michael T. Bradley. And Audrey Ivancy. See you when we have a sign-off. Bye-bye. <laughs> You have been listening to Ice on Mars. <laughs>